All right. Good evening. Welcome. And of course, nowadays, uh, it seems like more and more folks are joining us online. So we welcome those folks to our service as well. Um, tonight is our Truth Trackers, uh, Tiny Trackers, Faith Forths, Scripture Spies, Awards Night. And so uh, I heard Mr. Bickle is running a few minutes late when he gets here. Uh, we'll look forward to that. But until then, uh, let's begin with some hymn singing. Hymn 169, Would You Be Free from the Burden of Sin? There's Power in the Blood. Let's stand to sing together 169, please. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And the third, would you be whiter, much mightier than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. On the fourth, would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Please remain standing. All right. Let's begin with prayer. Brother Brandon, will you lead us in prayer, please? Amen. Very good. You can be seated. Let me make uh, one announcement with many subpoints, if you will, and then we'll sing again here in just a moment. We are just a week and a half away from Vacation Bible School, and I know it doesn't feel like that because it's been about 55 the last two days and rainy, a little warmer today, but it does not feel like VBS, but we are a week and a half away, and uh, I told some folks today I am in VBS mode. I flipped the switch today, and it's, it's, it's all downhill from here. So uh, we start on Sunday, July 5th, and obviously this week is the 29th of May, June 5th, okay, all right, so we start a week from this Sunday, let me tell you about some things we're doing to prepare, first of all, if you're able to help and haven't signed up yet, please sign up on the sign-up sheet, that'll be very important, need to have all the helpers by this Sunday signed up, uh, secondly, if you can bring cookies or Ice pops, I got that right, or sliced watermelon on Wednesday, let us know what you can bring, and uh, there's a sign-up sheet for that as well. Then some things we'll be doing ahead of time. Now, the first one is this Sunday afternoon. Uh, for those who are able, we're going to shorten our afternoon service on purpose, so we'll be uh, with the service from roughly 1.30 till about 2.00. Then from 2 to 3, those who are able, we want to start canvassing in Clio for VBS. So that'll be this Sunday afternoon. I understand not everybody can uh, walk, put things on doors and things like that. But if you can, bring your tennis shoes. We'll go out this Sunday from 2 to 3. Does that make sense? 
Maybe you can't do the action of walking, but you could be a driver, and you could take a team of four out. You could drive and sip your coffee while they do all the walking. Uh, that would be fine as well. Join us this Sunday. So canvassing this Sunday from 2 to 3 after a shortened afternoon service. Everybody get that? If you're at home and you got it, raise your hand. Okay, all right. If you're here and you got it, raise your hand. Okay. The second thing we're doing in preparation is not this Sunday, but Sunday, June 5th, we'll have a meeting during Sunday school for all the VBS workers. Obviously, if you're a Sunday school teacher, you'll not be able to be at that meeting, but for teens and adults, all the VBS workers, that will be our Sunday school hour. Brother Mitchell will be here, all right? He'll be here to preach in the morning service. He'll also be here for that meeting uh, in the morning. And then, uh, here we go, Sunday, June 5th, uh, we begin in the evening. There is going to be one more time of outreach, obviously this Sunday announced, but the following Saturday at 10.30 a.m., so Saturday, June the 4th, we're going to go out again doing some canvassing at 10.30 a.m. Does that make sense? So sign up, show up. And sh no, I almost said what my mom said. I could never say. No, I wasn't going to say that. But sign up, show up, and pray up, eat up, meet up. All, all of that will be great uh, for VBS coming up. All right, let's sing again. Uh, and you're going to lead which one? God can do anything. Okay, that is number 729. 729. You can remain seated. God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. He can save, He can keep, He can cleanse, and He will. God can do anything but fail. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. Great singing. All right, another announcement from me, and then Brother Bickle, I'll have you come in just a moment here. Uh, so you have to stay awake during this announcement so you know when to come. Okay. Um, next week, we do not have a Wednesday night service because we have a Thursday night service. So next week, Thursday night, 6.30, no service on Wednesday. We're going to have the group from Ambassador Baptist College here. There's a, a trio of ladies who sing and play. Uh, one of them I know personally, and the other one I think I know too, but I can't figure out how I know her. She just looks really familiar, so it's going to be like... I know you, you got to tell me how. So, uh, but then their leaders are John and Mary Beth Thompson, good friends of ours. And this would be Tim Thompson's brother. Older, I, I almost say dad because there's such a, you know, age gap. But this is their, her brother, his brother. <sighs> Tongue twisted tonight. So uh, the group is going to be a real blessing. Not next Wednesday, but what night? Thursday, Thursday 6.30. After the service is over, we're not going to be in a hurry, but we're having the group and the Thompsons, and we're inviting the teens and any college or right out of college, single age, all to our house for a cookout and volleyball. So that'll be after the service next Thursday night till approximately, well, let's just say till 9.30. So if you have a teenager or whatever, they will be done at 9.30 uh, next week. And that'll be after the service is done the group will go over there, teens will go over there, college age or singles, come on over there, we'll have a great time uh, there that night. All right, this is our words night. We're certainly thankful for our Wednesday night kids program um, and uh, appreciate very much uh, the emphasis of our leaders and also the curriculum on uh, the ability to take material home and work through the books. And I think a lot of what we'll be recognizing is faithfulness to attend and faithfulness in the books. So Brother Bickle, why don't you come ahead? So in Truth Trackers, we have a book, as Pastor said, that, that um, 
they could take home with them. And the idea is a, it's about a five-minute devotional each day. And if they do six out of the seven uh, each week, that counts as is doing the devotions for that week, and we keep track. And uh, we want to recognize several who finished that book. In other words, did every week that we were here. And um, we will start from the youngest and work our way up. And we uh, recognize those who are moving to either from tiny trackers into truth trackers or moving out of truth trackers into the teenage group. So we'll start with the youngest group. And we had one that completed their book. And she's moving from tiny trackers to truth trackers. And it's Eliana Noe. So come on up and get your prize here. Very good. That's for you. You're welcome. And then two more from Truth Trackers that completed their book. Uh, James Bickle. And Elijah Mulvane. Love James. There you go. Good job. And then uh, two more that are moving out of Truth Trackers this year. Um, and that is Audrey Bickle. Come on, come on. You. <laughs> and Eve Mulvane, and Eve also completed her book, so there's an extra prize in there. There you go. And that's it. Very good. Let's give those kids another round of applause. Okay. And. Shall we dismiss right now? Go ahead. Off to Tiny Trackers, Truth Trackers. I think you have a great night planned tonight. And uh, thankful for a great year, as well as those who are leading them. All right, one more hymn tonight. Hymn 288. Hymn 288. Uh, I would be like Jesus. Not one we've sung, uh, I don't think, since we've had this hymnal. Uh, so if you don't know it, that's fine. Let's learn it together. I would be like Jesus, hymn 288. Earthly pleasures vainly call me. I would be like Jesus. Nothing worldly shall enthrall me. I would be like Jesus. Us. Be like Jesus, this my song In the home and in the throng Be like Jesus all day long I would be like Jesus All the way from earth to glory on the third all the way from earth to glory, I would be like Jesus, telling o'er and o'er the story. I would be like Jesus, be like Jesus, this my song. In the home and in the throng Be like Jesus all day long I would be like Jesus That in heaven he may meet me I would be like Jesus that his words well done may greet me. I would be like Jesus, 
Be like Jesus, this my song In the home and in the throng Be like Jesus all day long I would be like Jesus Very good. Let me grab uh, a couple things here. A couple more quick announcements, and then, of course, we'll get to prayer requests. When we do have the prayer request, Andrew or someone, if you could help us uh, pass the mic around uh, so that those online can hear uh, what the prayer request. Just a reminder, teen boys and men, we have men's prayer breakfast this Saturday. We'll meet here at 8.30, and uh, we'll pray till approximately 9.15, then we'll head in the Fellowship Hall for breakfast. If you're able, bring a $5 donation, and uh, we'll have a great time of fellowship uh, with breakfast on Saturday. Okay, uh, I think those are all the announcements that need to be made. Um, Mrs. Fincham's son, Stephen, uh, his surgery was scheduled for Monday, got moved to today, and uh, I was texting Mrs. Fincham while he was in surgery, but we hadn't heard how things went today. So uh, I don't have an update for that, but obviously uh, definitely a need for prayer for Mrs. Fincham's son, Stephen, and his stomach cancer. So let's remember them in prayer. I have heard that uh, Jim and Donna made it back from uh, uh, their Caribbean trip, and, but I've also heard they're under the weather or sick, and so let's pray for them uh, to get better there as well. Uh, any other prayer requests that you have? And again, if we could have you use the mic, don't let it scare you. Uh, just so that folks online can hear what the prayer requests are. Anybody at all, just raise your hand. Oh, oh I just wanted to thank everyone for praying for my brother. Yes. He is uh, probably only has a few hours to live tonight. Oh, boy. But God is good. He knows best. All right. Well, our, our hearts and our prayers are with you there. Thank you. Anybody else? update or a matter of prayer. Something we should be praying about as a church, uh, Brother Dave Dame needs a new uh, vehicle for transportation, and uh, uh, he obviously needs a chairlift vehicle, which are hard to find and expensive, so we, we need to make this a matter of prayer that the Lord would provide and, and open up that opportunity. Okay. Um, my older brother uh, is having a biopsy this week. Okay. That was Mrs. Miller praying for a biopsy for her brother, and his name is? Jody. Jody, okay. Thank you. All right, Joe's hand was up there. Andrew. Paul's mom's surgery went well, yeah. and they, or the surgeon said that She'll probably have um, hernias the, over the next year just because of how many surgeries she, she's had. Right. So just prayer that she doesn't have one, that okay. she'd heal up fast from that. All right. Her name is, what's this, this is Knowlton's first name? Kathy. Kathy Knowlton. Pray for Kathy Knowlton, friends of ours, uh, who's had some health troubles and just recently had a, a major surgery. Let's pray for her. Anything else? David. Um. I don't know if anyone's heard, but Tim Thompson's been involved with um, drilling a well over in yes. Africa, uh -huh. and I think they did end up striking water, and it seems to be going well. Um, going think, well? <laughs> and I believe he said that the remaining need is just over $3,000. Okay. Yeah, Brother Tim has been sharing that online, and praise the Lord. So uh, thanks for that update. Anybody else? Yes. So one of my teachers, Mrs. Pearl's daughter, just broke her arm okay. on the trampoline. So. Okay. Andrew has an MRI on Monday and Tuesday, not Memorial Day, uh, Tuesday. Uh, from that, we'll find out if he needs a surgery or not. If it is a surgery needed, it would be to repair the cartilage that surrounds his shoulder. So um, appreciate your prayers for that. 
I'd love for him not to have to have surgery, but I'd rather get it fixed if it's not. Mrs. D has. My sister Bobby with the eye. Okay. <laughs> um, she is trying, they're trying to get her cleared to have that tumor removed from her stomach. Okay. So she's been meeting with doctors, so she, they still have to wait on cardiology. Okay. Uh, but they did tell her yesterday that she's a walking miracle because the stroke actually, she has no, the right side of her brain is gone. Mm. And so she should not even be able to walk or talk or anything. And she does all of those things. So mm. praise the Lord for yes. that. Yes, good. So she's still waiting. How long will she be waiting? Do you have any idea? Okay. It's up to her heart to handle that. Very the good. The shooting. Excuse me? The Texas shooting. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I, I got to be honest. I haven't been had opportunity to read or watch much over the news, uh, but obviously absolutely tragic situation in Texas. So let's pray for our country uh, and specifically for uh, those touched by this shooting. Anything else? All right. <clears throat> uh, not to move on too quickly, but our uh, missionary letters from the Angelias in Madagascar, and I encourage you to read it. It's on the back of our prayer sheet. Sounds like they had a very, very busy but fruitful month. Uh, in evangelism and moving into a new property and things. So lots of good things happening. Let's uh, pray for the Angelias this week. All right, if you will, turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're on our third message uh, taken uh, as we just go through the Lord's Prayer um, verse by verse and be reminded of the model prayer um, Christ's answer to the disciples when they asked, Lord, how, how should we pray? Teach us how to pray. And he said specifically, after this manner ought we to pray. And um, as has been our practice, I'd, I'd, I assume that most everyone knows the Lord's Prayer by heart. It's not meant to be memorized for what, what the Lord called vain repetition. It's not, you know, something you have to say as a Christian before you go to bed. But it is the model prayer, and I think we ought to, we ought to commit it to memory. Um, and if we can pray it with heart behind it, I don't think that's vain repetition at all. But let's, let's say it together, uh, beginning in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. Ready? Let's say it together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Verse 9 reminds us of the person of prayer. He's our Father which is in heaven, and we're to hallow his name. By, uh, by this reminder, uh, we're, we're just reminded of who God is, the fact that he is, number one, our Father, but he's overall, and because he's holy, we must also enter into his presence with a sense of his holiness on our minds. So hallowed be thy name. Lord, I'm, I'm coming to you in prayer, but I'm also aware of who you are as my Father, as my Father who is in heaven over all, and as my Father who cares about me, but yet I'm coming in with a recognition of your holiness. Hallowed be your name. The second verse, verse 10, uh, is the first petition. So we're reminded that prayer is a matter of asking. So uh, the Lord's Prayer is an acknowledgement of praise to God in the first verse, and then the last verse, verse 13, is also um, a, a verse of praise. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. But once we've come into the presence of God, we, we are commanded, we are told to ask Him. And prayer essentially is asking our Father for the things that we need. 
And we are commanded over and over, as we saw last Wednesday, to ask, ask, ask. And we know if we ask anything in his name, he heareth us. And many passages tell us or give promises that if we ask anything in his name, we shall receive. Ask and it shall be given. You seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. But there is kind of a filter built in in verse 10. And that is, the first petition is, Lord, thy kingdom come, my words here, not my kingdom. Lord, thy will be done, again, my words, not my will, but thine be done. So our petitions go through the filter of, Lord, your kingdom, not mine. Lord, your will, not mine. And that's what it means to ask in his name. The things that are... um, are authorized or led by the Lord in our prayer for his glory and for his kingdom. Again, not our own. That is the filter of our prayers. And I think we'll find when we spend time in prayer, the Lord leads us in how to pray. But we have to surrender our will. Lord, it's not, it's not just about what I want. You know, sometimes we pray, Lord, here's what I want, and I sure hope that's your will. No, it's Lord, I really want what you want. And to the best of my knowledge, I, I, I ask you for these things for your glory. And I believe that's, that's a biblical pattern of prayer. So, verse 11 is where we come to tonight. And this is the, day, the, the prayer for daily provision. So, the provision of prayer. God wants us, or commands us, to daily ask him for provision. Look what it says in verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, we're so used to the Lord's Prayer, we've learned it, many of us, growing up in church. But don't you think that's a little bit repetitive? Why doesn't it say, give us our daily bread? It says, give us this day, could have just said, give us this day our bread. Or it could have said, give us our daily bread. But it said, give us this day our daily bread. Do you think God is emphasizing something? Do you think the Lord is wanting us to to be aware of an emphasis here? God wants his children, you and I, to pray every day for provision. Now, we'll talk for uh, in, in just a minute. I believe it is both for physical provision and for spiritual provision. Now, if I could take a poll, when, when you pray along the lines of give us this day our daily bread, when you think of the Lord's Prayer, how many of us think of physical? How many of us think of spiritual? Well, you're the, you're the spiritual people, I guess, uh, here tonight. I think the answer is both. But the emphasis of the Lord is today. Lord, please provide for my needs. Today. It's daily, daily dependence upon the things that we need. Go ahead in Matthew 6 and look at verses 31 through 34. The Lord's Prayer, the model prayer comes in the Sermon on the Mount. And these familiar verses, verses 31 to 34. Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So do you see even kind of a repeating of this principle of daily dependence on God for my daily needs? Verse 31 Don't take thought for what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or how you're going to be clothed. 
That's talking about provision, isn't it? It's talking about daily needs. Food is a need every day. For some of us, five, six times a day, you know. It's a daily need. Drink, clothing, I think you could add shelter to this. The necessities. Our Father doesn't want us to worry about them every day, but according to the Lord's Prayer, He wants us to pray about them every day. We're commanded to pray for them in verse 11, and we're commanded don't take thought for them. Down in verse 31. Then verse 33, we're to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now obviously that verse applies to every area of our lives. There's broad application there. But when you think of it in terms of the context, okay, clothing, raiment, we're talking about our daily necessities. God says you take care of me or the spiritual matters first, and I'll take care of your physical matters. This principle of God's daily provision does involve our living by faith when it comes to giving. Now that's not my purpose in the message tonight. That's not anything I'm going to beat us over the head about. But in the scriptures, we are given principles of giving from Old Testament before the law, from after the Old Testament law, even in the New Testament, the matter of giving starts with what? It starts with a tenth, a tithe. Obviously, the emphasis of the New Testament is grace giving, but how the Jew understood that was beyond what I'm required to give, I will give more because I love the Lord. So the starting point of giving in the scriptures, again, before the law, after the law, into the New Testament, the starting point of giving is the tithe. I believe when we read Matthew 6.33 in this context, I certainly think it includes prioritizing giving when it comes to taking no thought for our daily needs. In other words... He says, don't take thought what you're going to eat, what you're going to be cleansed or drink, what, you, what you're going to be clothed, but seek first God's kingdom. Don't you think that's a logical conclusion? That God wants us to put him first and then trust him every day to meet our daily needs. So this matter of praying for and trusting God for daily provision, in one sense is a test of our faith. Meaning, who do I trust to meet my needs every day? That's a pretty fair question, isn't it? Who do I trust? Who do you trust to meet your needs every day? God wants us to trust him for our daily provision. So it's a test for us. And then when you include the principle of Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto, unto you. It's not that God needs to be tested, but he's, he's, he's saying, put me to the test too. Because as you trust me for your daily needs... And as you put me first in your giving and in your dependence, I will prove myself faithful over and over and over and over again. And for the vast majority of Christians that I know, we, well, let me rephrase that. For all Christians that I know, we need to depend on God daily. But isn't it interesting how it seems like there's not a lot of Christians, at least that I go to church with, that don't have financial needs. And if we go around this room, we could really get a belly aching going on if we, if we wanted to, right? 
sometimes I think about school, college, food shortage, gas. Yeah. All God's people said. <laughs> I mean, I don't know a lot of Christians who don't have financial needs. It's almost like the Lord wants us to have to depend on him every day. Which, why would we be surprised? Think of who he's talking to. These are the disciples. Do you think they had some financial concerns? They've left their fishing business. They've, in some cases, perhaps left family, children behind, and they're actually living itinerantly without a home, trusting the Lord every day to meet their needs. And he said, when you pray, ask him for your daily needs. All right, turn with me to Exodus chapter 16. Again, we kind of want to get into the, the brain. What do you think may have come to mind to the to the disciples or to the New Testament Christian when they read about, give us this day our daily bread. What miracle of the Old Testament probably came to mind when they prayed for their daily bread? Manna. So that's why we're in Exodus chapter 16. Verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people that shall go out and gather a certain rate every, say it with me, every day, that I may prove them whether they uh, will walk in my law. So finances were a test for Israel. Daily provision was a test for Israel, for us. And it shall come to pass, verse 5, that on the sixth day they shall prepare, prepare that which uh, they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Again, there's that word daily. Just a matter of principle, God provides bread daily. He doesn't provide it by the week. He doesn't provide it by Amazon delivery to your door every two days. God says, I'm going to provide your bread daily. Second, look at verse 15 and 16, skipping down a little bit. When the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. Does anybody know what the word manna means? What does it mean? Okay, I heard both. Many times we assume it means bread. Some of us assumes it means like cinnamon rolls. No. It means, what on earth is that? You know, manna, what is it? I have no idea what this is. This is bread from heaven. Verse 16. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Next word is what? Gather of it. Every man according to his eating and omer for every man, according to the number of your persons, take ye every man of them which are in his tents. God provides the bread, but we still have to go gather it. Isn't that how God provides? The gathering would be futile unless God put it out there. So it was miraculous. But the miracle would be empty if God's people didn't go obey and gather it. Uh, it reminds me of what Dr. Berg says on his videos. The faithful farmer. Is farming an act of man or an act of God? The answer is, it's absolutely both. Because a seed turning into a stalk, turning into corn, that is a miracle. There's no scientist still who's figured out how to just do this organically 
It involves an act of God. There's no scientist who can make it rain. I know the, the cartoons, you know, they have those rain machines and they never seem to work. Anybody remember those? Okay, they never worked. Man can't make it completely a controlled environment without building literally a greenhouse and powering it himself. We're facing a food shortage in America in 2022. Farming is a miracle that happens by God's design every year. But yet, the farmer has to daily go out and plant and harvest and weed and all the things that I don't know much about, but a lot of you know a whole lot more than I do. It takes W-O-R-K for God's miracle to be brought into, whether it be financial provision or food provision, it takes work. And God provided, but the Israelites had to go out there every day and gather it. God's provision was also proportional to their need. Did you see what we read? God says, every person gets an omer. I looked up today what an omer is. An omer is 3.7 quarts. That's almost a gallon of manna every day. But God knew exactly what every living Israelite needed. And he provided proportionally to that need. Again, I'm just telling you from experience, isn't it amazing how God provides, but he provides through miracles, he provides through work, and he often provides just enough for that day? We've all had stories like this. I bought cars, taken out loans for cars. And I hoped that once the loan was paid off, that car would last another year. But it's like I paid it off on Tuesday and the thing died on Friday, you know? But it didn't die before it was paid off. God meets our needs. That's a poor example, but he meets our needs proportionally. He meets them daily. And he meets them both through miraculous, but also what we'd call natural or human effort means where his provision comes in the avenue of work or opportunity to work that comes from his hand. Turn to Proverbs. Well, I told you to turn. Let me read verses 17 through 18 in Acts 16. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more and some less. And when they did meet... It with an omer, he gathered much that had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They that gathered every man according to his eating. So, again, God's provisional, precise provision on a daily basis. Turn to Proverbs 30, verse 8. Proverbs 30, verse 8. This is the word of God. Proverbs 30, verse 8 says, Remove far from me vanity and lies. We would all agree with that, right? Lord, remove vanity from my life. But look at the parallel statement at the end. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient or helpful for me. I, <clears throat> I tend to go to the same gas station. I'll tell you which one it is. B&B, M57. There's some humorous people there. And it just seems to be a convenient place for me to stop. They know who I am. I don't think we're on a first name basis, but we're, we're, we're getting about there, you know. The lady the other day is like, sometimes you're in a tie, sometimes you're out fishing, sometimes you got baseball stuff on. Who are you? And I'm like, (laughs) yeah. Uh, 
But you ever see people who, and I've seen them over there, it's, it's, it's a, a string this long of lottery tickets. And for many people, it's a daily. Investment would be a kind word. Waste, addiction. And I watch these people, whether either they're buying or they're, I don't even know how it works. It goes through the reader. You know what I'm talking about? They put it through the slot. Does that tell you if you won something? Now, people are afraid to answer, you know. I, don't, I think it tells you if you, I was in there the other day and a lady won seven bucks. And I'm thinking, but you just spent $24.95. My grandma played the lottery every day. She was wishing to be rich. I love my grandma. Do you know what? For 99% of us, rich, being rich, would be the worst thing that ever happened to us. Because while there's not anything wrong with wealth, for most of us, it takes us away from depending on God every day. I'm going to tell you, anything that makes us depend on God every day is a good thing, not a bad thing. There are preachers who preach a prosperity gospel. I'd like them to explain to me Proverbs 38. 30 verse 8. Give me that which is good or convenient for me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. The prosperity gospel is a false gospel. The poverty gospel is a false gospel, meaning that we should all be poor and not eat and not have any house or anything to meet our needs. That is not God's will. Now, it can be his plan, it can be a trial, but God does not overtly make us poor because we're Christians. Does that make sense? So the prosperity gospel is not God's word. The poverty gospel is not God's word. You know what is God's word? God's provision. God's daily provision is his plan for our lives. And God, here's the whole point of the message tonight. God wants us to ask him daily to meet our needs. Lord, I want to live a take no thought for food, raiment, for my necessities. But in order to do that, God, I got to depend on you every day. And part of my depending on you every day is to ask you for the things that I need. God wants us to ask him to provide a car that runs, a house that meets our needs, food on our table, functional clothing, And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Now that's an Americanized version because back in those days they didn't have a car. But I'm saying if life requires you to have a car, it's not wrong to ask for a car. Does that make sense? God wants us to ask him, Lord, would you meet my needs? And depend on him daily so that we can have the privilege of watching him provide over and over and over again. Turn over to John chapter 6, 31 through 33. John chapter 6, 31 through 33. I want you lastly just to see that not only is God interested in our depending on him for our physical needs, he's also wanting to ask us to ask him for our spiritual needs needs. Now, bread in the Bible can mean physical bread. Give us this day our daily bread. 
but it can also have a spiritual dimension to that. Bread is also used for spiritual provision as well. John 6, 31 through 33 kind of ties these both together. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus saith unto them, or said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you uh, not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. You know what Jesus is saying? I'm the bread. Why? Because life is more than just physical. Our needs every day are more than just physical. Lord, I need you to meet my spiritual need every day through my relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. Give me that kind of bread, Lord. I need you. And I'm not trying to complicate. I'm simply saying that our lives are more than bread. Man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You cannot separate Jesus Christ from the Word, John 1, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. How do we, how do we, how do we gather our daily need for Jesus? It's through this book. And God wants us, our Father wants us, to seek both his physical and spiritual provision every day. We have a tendency, I have a tendency, to look to other things, other places, to meet our needs. Where if we would simply just take the Lord's Prayer, look to me every day. Yes, it's important to plan. A wise man sees evil and prepares himself for that, the Bible says. It's important to save. There are Bible principles about investing and saving that certainly need to be applied. But you know what God wants us to depend on him for? Today! Well, I don't know what's going to happen next month. I don't know what's going to happen next year. But Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the food in my counter today. Thank you for what you've given me. Thank you for all that you are and all that you've given. And Lord, we pray for daily provision. Lord, would you keep supplying our needs every day. And having food and raiment today, let us therewith be content. And tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'm going to seek first your kingdom of God. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to test you, if you will. And I'm going to allow my finances to also be a proving ground for my dependence on you. This is how God has designed it to work, that God's people trust him every day for their needs. Would you bow in prayer with me? Interesting how that All of us right now are being financially stretched. There's no doubt about it. All you have to do is buy groceries, put gas in, and any extra money we have seems to just go in that gas tank. But yet our God is still on the throne, and he's still our Father who says, depend on me every day for your needs. Who would say, Pastor, God has reminded me or spoken to me about my need to daily depend on him through prayer and to trust my father for a physical or a spiritual provision that only he can provide.
to trust him daily to be my Jehovah Jireh provider in my life. If God spoke to you, would you raise your hand along with mine? Lord, thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. Lord, this is, I believe, one of the first names that you revealed yourself. Jehovah will provide. And Lord, we've seen it time and time again, but yet how we so often, Lord, we're trusting in other things. We're looking in other places and we're worrying and fretting rather than daily trusting your provision. And Lord, help us to come to our Father. Lord, as your word says, on a daily basis, Lord, trusting and depending on you to meet our daily needs. Thank you for how faithful you have been. Thank you how faithful you are in our lives right now. And thank you for how faithful you have promised to be tomorrow. But Lord, help us to depend on you and to seek first your kingdom in our lives. Help us, Lord, in this area, we ask. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go to prayer. And I encourage you to pray with anyone you'd like to. And I'll close this in prayer in about 10 minutes. So let's go to prayer.